Happy Saturday, everyone. It's time once again for a Pio Positive for that team. Today's verdict is from Cheryl. Hi, Jack. I went for a walk the other day and suddenly encountered a majestic stag. We looked at each other for a few seconds and, and then he walked off into the woods. Ah, oh, you're still here, huh? That makes two of us. When are your parents coming back? Actually, they might just stay in Florida. Florida? Your parents? <laughs> What's so funny about that? They'll be back soon. Florida is expensive and honestly isn't all it's cracked up to be. They found a lovely and affordable place next to the beach. Sunshine and the beach get boring real fast. Well, I better be on my way. Have a nice day. Your heart is back, and it's the fact, no turning back. <laughs> Hmm, these look like bills. Ooh, interesting.
answer. It's the mail. I'm busy. Aren't we all? No! Damn it! I almost had it. I almost fucking had it. Thanks for breaking my concentration. You're welcome. <sighs> Video games are supposed to be fun. I feel horrible. Absolutely horrible. Maybe you should try a different hobby. You know what? I can beat this damn game, and I'm not quitting until I have. Good luck with that.
Okay, fellow Providence Okians, it's time once again for the sent in letters and announcements. This one's from our very own Maureen, or Mo, as we all know. Hey, foe. Just wanted to grab your ears for a second to let you know all about the upcoming open mic night over at Mo's Diner this Sunday. That's right. Claim your 15 minutes of fame, enjoy some whale performances, and usual good food and drinks for everyone. I expect to see all of y'all for a great evening. And maybe even some dancing. You know who you are. Come join the show at Moe's at 8 p.m. this Sunday. I'll come get you if you don't. Well, you heard folks. And I'll be there too, so you better not miss it. Back to the music and to one of my favorite songs. Mail Carrier Meredith. Farmer DJ Jack. Seen any ghost drivers on the way here? Ghost drivers? Yeah, you know, people driving on the wrong side of the road. Nope, haven't seen him. Okay, I was just wondering. Don't bother. I need to get back to the live show. See you tomorrow, I reckon. Bye now. I reckon. Oh, and please close the door. Don't want to broadcast any mail truck noise. Thank you much. the last of them. a week full of turmoil. You can say that again. If only the Angels hadn't lost to the White Sox. That would have made it perfect. Never underestimate White Sox. They're playing each other again tonight. Should I change the bet? Nope. Hold the line. Okay. Let's see what happens. Maybe you're my lucky charm. Have a great weekend, Meredith. Oh wait, this was your last day. I totally forgot to tell you, but they still haven't found someone else for the job. So I guess you can have it, if you want. Wow, that sounds quite nice, actually. Of course, and it's a great job. You know what? Think about it. Let me know Monday morning when you return your stuff. I'm gonna run now. Red Sox are playing the Yankees. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's your dad again. How was your time in the mail delivery business? Oh, hi, Dad. Well...
It was okay. A nice change of scenery. Great, but not something you do for the rest of your life. Actually, it seems like they haven't filled the vacancy yet. They haven't? Well, you know what I'd do. Oh, hold on, Meredith. Let me guess. Mom wants to talk to me? Hi, Meredith. Sorry to butt in, but you're thinking about staying in Providence Oaks? Hi, Mom. I'm not sure, to be honest. What are you not sure about, dear? Are other people involved? You know, any interesting, interesting ones, perhaps? No, no, that's not it. It's just easy going here. The surroundings, the job, the people. Maybe you just need a break. Or maybe this really is what you want. But whatever you decide, think long and hard on it. Oh, hold on. I have a suspicion Dad wants to talk to me. Meredith, I just wanted to say, you need to clean the lint filter on the dryer every once in a while. If you never do that, it could burn the house down. No problem, Dad. I'll make sure to do that. Great, thanks. I sometimes suddenly worry about things like that in the middle of the night. And it's not about the dryer, of course. I want you to be safe. And I'm sure you'll be okay. I'll be fine. Don't lose sleep over me. Okay, Em. Take care. I gotta go. We're running out of coins again. Bye! I hope you don't think I'm a cheapskate for having dinner here. There aren't a lot of other restaurants around, and I'm pretty sure their food isn't better than Moe's. Don't worry about it, Robert. I love it here. Thanks, Meredith. You're such a kind person. Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Ladies first. Hi, Maureen. Mmm. Oh, pancakes. I need pancakes. Excellent choice, Meredith. And what would you like to wash it down with? Hmm. I think I'll have a... Beer. Gotcha. Robert? The usual for me, Maureen. All right, Robert. T-bone steak and a beer. Doesn't get any more lumberjack than that. Be right back, folks. Ashley, it's pancake time! And get the steaks out! Maureen's the best. Did you hear about the open mic night she's organizing? Yeah, she only told me about it a dozen times. I wish I could go, especially since I heard that Jack's gonna do a thing. Jack? What's he gonna do? Announce the weather for next week? Believe it or not, he's a very good ballet dancer. Jack? Really? <laughs> no, he's into comedy. Would have loved to have heckled him. Oh well, this is a good week anyhow. Must be nice that the apartments are off your mind for a while. Alrighty, here are your beverages, folks. I'm afraid the food might take a little longer, as a certain kitchen helper thought the freezer was a good place for storing steaks. <sighs> I really should get one of those microwave ovens to defrost them. You seem a little stressed. Is it the upcoming open mic? Why should I be stressed about that? It's going to be lovely. And you better be there, Robert Harris. Maureen, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. I did not just hear you say that, young man. Oh, by the way, Meredith, I need to steal him for two minutes. He needs to check on some wiring for me. Excuse me, Meredith. This is Maureen's jurisdiction. You have to obey the law. Mmm, that tasted so good. Thanks, Maureen, for the fantastic blueberry pie. You're welcome. It's my way of making up for stealing you away from Meredith. Ooh, I swear. She can give quite the stink eye if she wants, can't you, hon? Oh boy, the world would be boring without her. Speaking of, are you gonna miss your daily delivery round? Not really. 
I'm looking forward to going back to the big city. Ah, the big city. That's not for me. Have you always lived in a small town? Yeah, Providence Oaks is my second one. After my divorce, I had to move away from the first one. Everything and everyone reminded me of her. And how are you now? Have you gotten over it? But maybe I shouldn't bother you with the innermost feelings of a lumberjack. Wouldn't be a bother at all. Robert and Meredith, sorry to break up your conversation, but we're closing up early tonight. Gotta set up some stuff for the open mic night, and I can't use any peeping eyes. Oh, okay, Maureen. No problem. Let me get the check for you, so I can leave you two to your lovely evening. Can you put it on my tab, Maureen? Anything for you, darling. Do you mind if I pay? Or at least for half of it? Meredith, after all your help, this is the least I can do. So, yes, I mind. Now let's get going before Maureen gets her broom out. Meredith, thanks again for your help. Not sure what would have happened if you hadn't come here for your mail delivery vacation. You're welcome, Robert. I was happy to help you out. A little help goes a long way. Hope to see you around again. You too, Robert. Take care. Good luck with the apartments, and call me if you need help. Anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So he asks the bartender, what's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, ah, oh, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, want to give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those stakes are too high. <laughs> this one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's driving down the freeway, but all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, one car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens! <laughs> well, folks, wasn't that special? Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic, after all. <laughs> it's actually time for a little break right now. So come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? Love it. That hairdresser did a great job. Thank you, dear. Pity it's quite the waste of time and money, seeing as how I can't stay for long. Really? What's the rush? You see, my son decided to drop by, unannounced, and he's staying the whole weekend. 
Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Matt Kearney, in an egg brace. Real funny, huh? Oh, hi, Matt. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss to the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair, and now I'm here looking like a loser. Ah, oh, poor you. I hope you'll be okay again soon. I hope so. I can't even use my computer right now. Guess who? Jack Burton? Ah, <laughs> now I'm going to be a disappointment. It's just me. Even better, though I never would have guessed. So, what have I missed? Eh, not much. Jack just did some comedy. But the final act is supposed to be the real showstopper. At least, that's what Maureen tells me. Really? Well then, I guess I arrived just in time. So, how have you been? Thanks for the note. It was very sweet. I meant every word, babe. So, have you... Hey, Angie. Hey, Meredith. Sorry to pop in like this, but I just wanted to inform you I fixed everything on the RV. She's got a new radio, I replaced some wiring, adjusted windshield wiper speed. The sea turtle is ready to go! <laughs> That's great, Lori. Thanks. I'm sure it's like she's brand new. Well, I wouldn't say that, but you'll see. Gotta go later. An RV, huh? Oh, it's kind of a long story. You know Mickey and June? The hiker couple, right? Well, long story short, I've somehow gained possession of their vehicle of choice, which, as Miss Young just described, is a perfectly adequate RV that I'm going to use to motor right out of this sad little town. Really? Good for you. Absolutely. Come with me. I mean it. Leave this sad old town behind and go wherever we want to go. Free spirits, the way Mickey and June intended. Hmm, I have grown quite fond of you, you know. Likewise, Miss Weiss. But at some point, you've got to give me a definite answer. You get that, right? Look alive, folks. It's time for the final act. It's a doozy. <laughs> Saved by the bell, babe. I got stuff to do anyway. Okay, I'll let you know. Dear people, none other than our own Kate Evans will perform next. She has been writing songs since she was a little girl. And I cannot say how thrilled I am to host her first performance of hopefully many to come. I am so proud of you, honey. Please put your hands together for Kay, everyone. Choices make me smile. What if I just enjoy the ride? Life's a game of chance for every break you get. You leave another one behind. Just as long as you keep trying, you will get there.
This does not happen a lot, but you have left me speechless. That was K, people. Another round of applause. Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, it's good to see someone flourish. But I'd rather be home right now. Isn't it fun to step out every once in a while? Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. You did great. But ladies, if you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Kay's place, Mo Kay's. We haven't settled on a name yet, but there you go. Another round of applause. And have some drinks with us. Kay's place, huh? Congratulations. That was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me like a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> But it feels good, you know? That was amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Em. It felt amazing. I was so super nervous, you know? Like, shaking and all that. I'm so glad it went well. I have to hand it to you. You were great. I have to go in a bit, but... Let me know when the next gig is, yeah? You're not leaving already, are you? The fun's just starting. Oh, wait. Of course. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait. I'm not good at this stuff, so... I just want to say... It was good to have you back these past weeks, and Really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. I promise we'll keep in touch. Whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course. And remember, time marches, marches on. on. <laughs> See you, Kay. Thanks. For everything. My lovely people, the time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end. Ashley was going to do a ventriloquist bit next. But I just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin. Let me thank you again for joining us. And there's plenty of food and drink to go around. I sure do hope they're keeping things proper in there while I'm taking a breather. So, you had fun? It was great. Kay was amazing. You said it. Oh, that girl is so talented. Oh, I'd give my big toe to be able to do what she does behind a keyboard. Oh, sheesh. I'm still thinking about your news about handing over the diner. Kay's place, huh? That was quite the bombshell. That's my style. I've mentioned it to Kay, yes, many times since Stan died. She probably thought I was joking half the time, honestly. I just want to give her the option. It's hers whenever she wants it. And if she doesn't, that's fine too. Seems like a bold choice to announce it to the town like that, though. Ha! You know me, hon. At least all the options are out in the open now, right? So what's next for you? 
now that you're handing over the reins. Well, to be honest, I'll probably stick around the diner for now, help out, and maybe I'll try my hand at something different on the side, you know? Maybe fix up some of those cabins in the woods, rent them out. Never too old to find something new to do. That sounds like a great idea. Doesn't it just? How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. We really reconnected. And I'm happy we did. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women. And if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, you've got a big day in the morning, don't you? Know what you're gonna do yet? Stick around, move back? I think I have a feeling. Yeah. Then you go follow that feeling, hon. Thanks, Maureen. I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Wise. Take care, Maureen. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the Angels, just like you said, and won. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride, and then they lost. They're playing again tonight, and now... I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. And betting against the pattern pays off, White Sox. Okay, Meredith, thanks. I'll go with that. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job, and that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. But no, I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks again. Ah, oh, that's not what I was hoping to hear, Meredith. But I understand. What are you gonna do? Back to my home, my job. And my life in the big city. So I guess you're going back to the future, eh? Computers, living in the fast lane. Can't say that I envy you. Although it must be nice to live close to a major ballpark. Do you need a ride to the airport? Yes, please. I'd love to take one last look over the lake. All right, go grab your stuff and let's go. And the V-Belt is not in great shape, but it should last you another month or three. The sea turtle in all of her glory. Do you like her? Meredith and I named her. She's pretty amazing, Lori. Cute name, too. Thanks for doing this for me. You're very welcome. I thought you really wanted to have the RV, Lori. I wanted to work on her really badly. But now that she doesn't need any more work, Angie can at least drive her around. Since I don't have a license, and I'm not old enough to get one anyway. I'll keep you up to date on all our adventures, promise. It'll be like you're right there with us. I'm counting on it. Hey, Meredith? I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. <laughs> Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course. I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Magnificent, isn't she? Yeah, she certainly knows a lot about cars for a kid her age. <laughs> I meant the RV. But sure, Lori's great too. So, you all packed? Sure am. The big stuff's in storage. But I've got the bare necessities. Clothes, toiletries, and a whole bunch of videotapes. 
So, where are we going first? <laughs> yeah, about that. Hmm? I would really, seriously, definitely like to go with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, let me think about it for a second. Yep, thought about it. You can come! I have one condition. I get to pick which movie we watch first. <laughs> Deal. I'm in the driver's seat, by the way. I've heard about your driving. What? What have you heard? From who? People talk. When advertising exec David Howard, parentheses Albert Brooks, is passed over for a promotion and subsequently fired, he decides to change his whole life. He convinces his wife Linda, parentheses Monica Johnson, to sell their house and roam the country easy rider style in a Winnebago. Okay, forget this one. That's just not going to be relatable at all. <laughs> nope. We've got nothing in common with those guys. I have another flick where a bunch of academics set up a ghost hunting business in an old fire station. That should be way more accessible. Angie Eastman, have you seen every single tape in here? Not all of them, but most. Come on! But I don't mind watching them again. In fact, I'd love to see them with someone who... Knows nothing about movies? I was going to put it a little nicer than that. Someone who has unspoilt virgin eyes. Virgin eyes? What, are you a poet now? <laughs> All right, well, Lost in America will unspool before these virgin eyes soon enough. Tell me about Stand By Me. It's about four kids from Oregon, right? Sorry for button in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own K. Evans. 